This is the PowerPoint lecture for the endocrine system medications. We're going to review hormones and the medications used to treat hormonal disorders. This is part one. Part two will cover the pancreas and diabetes. The foundations of the endocrine system are the hormones and the glands. Hormones are the body's chemical messengers. They travel in the bloodstream to tissues and organs, and they can affect processes like growth and development, metabolism, sexual function, reproduction, and mood. Endocrine glands are a special group of cells that make these hormones. The hypothalamus is known as the body's switchboard. It tells the pituitary gland what to do. It receives information from nerves around the body and then regulates release of hormones from the pituitary. The pituitary gland is the master gland. It releases a broad range of hormones which regulate other glands in the body. When a hormone level becomes too high, the body tells the hypothalamus, which in turn tells the pituitary, to stop producing the hormone. This is called a negative feedback system. I think of it like a furnace. Once it's reached its temperature, it shuts off. This kind of system regulates most of the body. The hormones of the anterior pituitary are FSH, which stimulates sperm and egg production. LH stimulates release of the egg. TSH regulates the release of thyroid hormones. ACTH regulates the release of epi and glucocorticoids from the adrenals. GH or growth hormone stimulates growth and prolactin stimulates milk production. In the posterior pituitary we have ADH which conserves fluid and oxytocin which contracts the uterus. You know, oxytocin or brand name pitocin is a very commonly used medication and it's often used to start labor when a pregnant woman is overdue. It's also used to keep a lagging labor going by increasing the frequency, duration, and intensity of uterine contractions. Most of these hormones can be given to patients for deficits. These hormones may be synthetic or natural. Others may be recumbent. Recumbent DNA technology is the process of taking a gene from one organism and inserting it into the DNA of another. This is also called gene splicing. Gonads are the sex organs. The gonads release hormones in response to those hormones released by the pituitary gland. In the female, it's the ovaries which produce the hormones estrogen and progesterone. The testes are the male gonads and they produce androgens which are male sex hormones. The main androgen is testosterone. The thyroid gland is located in the neck and plays a major role in our metabolism. The thyroid gland secretes calcitonin, which regulates the blood and bone calcium levels. It also produces thyroid hormones T3 and T4, which stimulate every tissue in the body to produce pr proteins and increase the amount of oxygen used by the cell. So does it make sense that if the thyroid is low, the patients have less energy? The four parathyroid glands are located on the surface of the thyroid gland. These glands are responsible for the concentration of sodium and calcium in the blood and urine. They also secrete parathyroid hormone, which helps regulate calcium levels. The calcitonin and parathyroid hormones balance each other out, keeping the blood calcium level at an optimum level. So it's all about homeostasis. The thyroid again secretes calcitonin to force calcium in the bone. The parathyroid glands are embedded in the thyroid and balance calcitonin with parathyroid hormone which pulls calcium out of the bone. I envision it like this pic. Calcitonin puts calcium in the bone. The thyroid looks like a butterfly with the four parathyroid glands which fly away or parathyroid, the calcium is pulled out of the bone. The pancreas is located in the abdominal cavity. There are two major functions of the pancreas. It secretes digestive enzymes and regulates blood glucose through the secretion of insulin which decreases blood sugar and glucagon which increases blood, blood sugar. Again, here's an example of homeostasis. Our body's keeping everything in balance. The liver stores glucagon and helps determine glucose levels. 
The adrenal glands are small glands located on top of each kidney. They produce hormones that you can't live without, including sex hormones and cortisol. So the secretion of ACTH hormone by the pituitary stimulates the release of glucocorticoids, with cortisol being one of them. You know, cortisol, along with its partner epinephrine, which is released by the inner medulla, is best known for its involvement in fight-or-flight response and temporarily increases energy production at the expense of processes that are not required for immediate survival, like our immune system. Cortisol helps maintain blood pressure, cardiovascular function. It slows the immune response down and maintains steady glucose levels. You know, we've repeatedly reviewed prednisone through our pharmacology studies, which is a glucocorticoid. The pineal gland is located in the brain and it secretes melatonin in response to input from the eyes. Isn't that interesting? That's why they recommend that you sleep in a dark room. That's also why you feel more sleepy in the winter because there are more hours of darkness and melatonin is released. Melatonin or barbiturates may be ordered for a deficiency. The growth hormone does just that. It regulates growth. We have giantinism, which is an effect of hypersecretion of growth hormone, and dwarfism, which is a result of hyposecretion. For low growth hormone, a recumbent form of growth hormone is called somatotrophin. This is a prescription medication, and it treats child's growth um, disorders and adults with growth hormone deficiencies. If taken orally, growth hormone is digested by the stomach before it can be absorbed, so these medications have to be given by injection. You know, the most common use for growth hormone is not FDA approved. Some people use this hormone along with other performance enhancing drugs such as anabolic steroids in an attempt to build muscle and improve athletic performance. One problem with anabolic steroids is that while muscles and structures may grow, the tendons can become very brittle and set the athlete up for injury. Anabolic steroids are synthetic variations of the male sex hormone testosterone. By prescription, they can help trauma or AIDS patients repair tissue. Side effects of anabolic steroids include aggressive behavior, acne, unwanted male pattern hair growth in women, even liver cancer and arteriosclerosis can. Nandrolone is an example of an anabolic steroid. So just to review, when we talk about steroids, we're talking about a four-ringed organic compound. Dietary lipids, sex hormones like estradiol and testosterone, and dexamethasone are examples of these. Creatinism is a disorder caused by hypothyroidism, and it happens in utero and early infancy. The brain will grow slowly in children, and if it's not treated rapidly, it can cause decreased mental growth and retardation. Graves' disease is a disorder caused by too much thyroid. There may be bulging eyes, hyperactive metabolisms, goiter, and weight loss. You know, a goiter is usually caused from an iodine deficiency that causes the thyroid to enlarge and tries to produce thyroxin, one of the thyroid hormones. You know, if hyperthyroidism is left untreated, it can create a thyroid storm, which is a life-threatening condition. These individuals can have tachycardia, which is high heart rate, hyperthermia, which is high temperature, chest pain, sweating, weakness, heart failure, anxiety, shortness of breath, and disorientation. The treatment for hyperthyroidism is a thyroidectomy or removal of the thyroid or a radioactive iodine. You know, when the radioactive iodine is taken into the body in liquid or capsule form, it concentrates in the thyroid cells and this radiation destroys the thyroid gland. Armor thyroid is a natural thyroid medication which comes from a pig thyroid gland. This, use, this used to be our only thyroid replacement medication, but you know, it was problematic because there was no way to standardize the exact amount of the dose for each batch. The main treatment today is levothyroxine or Synthroid, which is a man-made version of the thyroid hormone thyroxine or T4. Side effects of these medications are nausea and vomiting and signs of increased metabolism. T for tachycardia and tremors, and H for hypertension and headaches. 
you know, our responsibility as nurses is to teach patients to take these medications at the same time each day without food and make sure that they are having their TSH levels done at least once a year. The adrenals can over-secrete or under-secrete hormones. Absence disease is where the adrenals under-secrete glucocorticoid hormones. Oh, say that three times real quick. Absence, you need to add some glucocorticoids. The symptoms are chronic fatigue that worsens over time, muscle weakness, diarrhea, hypotension, hypoglycemia, and weight loss. The treatment is hydrocortisone USP tablets. You know, we've talked many times about the side effects of these medications. Sugar, salt, sex, sick, and stop. Remember, sugar can cause hyperglycemia, salt can cause edema, and weight gain. Sex is decreased libido. Sick patients, remember, can get sick easier because the immune response is stiffened, it's decreased, and stops slowly. Cushing's disease is where there's an accretion of glucocorticoids. The patient may have hypertension, hyperglycemia, a development of fatty hump between their shoulders, upper body obesity, and a rounded face. The treatment is usually based on the overproduction and what causes it. It can be surgery, radiation, or chemotherapy. Well, that completes part one of the endocrine system. Let me know if you have any questions. Part two will cover the pancreas and diabetes.